So what is going on guys, NandoPrince93 here with another video and between iPadOS 14, the Magic Keyboard as an accessory and then also just having an older iPad from 2018, an iPad Pro and not upgrading to that 2020 model, battery life is getting a little bit worse. And what I wanted to show you guys is give you 12 tips or tricks, whatever you guys want to call it, uh, to kind of improve battery life on your iPad. And this will apply to any iPad. It doesn't just have to be the Pro, it could be any age as long as it's running iPadOS 14 and it has these settings that I'm going to go through with you guys. So sit back, relax, and let's start saving some battery on our iPad so they last longer. Because accessories like the Magic Keyboard and iPadOS 14 have been pretty detrimental to the battery life on my iPad Pro. So let's get right into it. So I'm gonna grab the iPad, pull it off its dock, and kind of screen share exactly what I'm doing over here, guys. Okay, so the first thing that I'm gonna show you guys, which is probably pretty obvious and probably the one that takes up the most amount of battery on your iPad Pro is push notifications, right? Just overall notifications. So if you hop into your settings and hit the notifications, you should have custom app notifications for all your different applications. For instance, you know, all these different ones, for example, AMC theaters, um, Apple store, I have a bunch of them that are just totally off because I don't need to know every moment, every second of exactly what is happening inside of that application. And every time a push notification comes through, that means that in the back end, your iPad Pro or any iOS device is grabbing information from where it needs to while using internet, right? And that's what's kind of killing battery in the background. And again, these are all battery saving things that if you do them all together, you're definitely going to see some increase in battery life and increase in being able to use your iPad normally. So that's my first recommendation. Go into your notifications. Don't be the person who just says yes to accept all notifications. Make sure that the notifications that you're receiving are actually notifications that you want versus random ones that like something from hotels.com. I don't really care about that. If I need to go get a hotel, I'll go into the application and get a hotel. So let's talk about tip number two. This one's actually really, really cool and it requires you to use shortcuts. So if I hop into the actual shortcuts menu, you go into automation and automation added something very, very, I know by default Apple sets, especially for iPhones at 20% battery level, it recommends that you go into low battery mode. And then same thing for the iPad Pro. It's a little bit different because you can't actually go into it on the iPad Pro with iPadOS, but around 10% battery, it also goes into this low power mode and warns you, right? What you're able to do now with these automations is actually go in and change that default, right? So for me, I have it set to whenever the battery hits below 50%, it'll go into battery saver mode, which is that yellow battery on the top, right? And that's awesome. I love that we're able to customize that just purely through automation. And you set it up one time and I'll walk you guys through it. So you just press a plus button, create personal automation, go all the way down to battery level. Here you choose what your battery level you want. So you can even do it at 90%, 95, it doesn't really matter. It's totally up to you and make sure it does falls below 50%. So once it falls below 50%, you add the action, which you could search low power mode, right here, set low power mode, boom, next, and you're good to go. So I'm gonna stop that one because I already have it set up. That's how you change that default setting from that 20% battery level and lower to go into low power mode. Well, this one has to do with the new update to both iOS and iPadOS, so 14, the widgets. So people are falling in love with widgets. You've seen all these different cool setups and things like that. What I wanna touch on with widgets is that limit the widgets that are constantly fetching data, right? So for instance, the weather widget probably consumes a lot more data than my battery widget, right? Because my weather widget is constantly going to the weather channel wherever it pulls the information from asking hey what's the temperature right now what's it going to be in an hour in two hours next week and that's going to drain a lot of battery especially if it's currently active and always active but things like the battery widget that's not pulling any internet data right news that's another one it's always constantly pulling new news to show you at a glance but that's pulling information and it's sucking up battery so make sure that you don't load your widgets menu and your iphone or your ipad with different widgets and that's, that might be a reason why they're kind of restricting us from putting widgets all over the place on the iPad Pro. Imagine if they were just filling up their screens with all these widgets that were con constantly consuming energy, right? People would be very, very frustrated that the battery is not lasting that long. Another big one has to do with Siri. So if you go into your settings, go into Siri and search, I highly recommend turning off the Hey Siri and then also all the Siri suggestions, right? So for instance, down here where it says Siri suggestions, these are all turned on because I actually use them on a regular basis when I kind of, when you go down, these are the Siri suggestions, right? These top apps right here that are being suggested to you. And lo and behold, that actually pulls data, right? Because it's using, you know, what you've been doing, what apps you've been using to 
easily let you access those, right? So that's gonna suck up a lot of battery. So I do recommend, unless you use it a lot like I do, turn all these off, because that'll save you some battery. Another important one has to be background refreshes, right? So if you go into general, go into background app refresh, you can see that all of mine are pretty much on, which I do regret and I do need to go in here and actually turn some of these off because I don't need, you know, Airbnb to be constantly refreshing in the background. You know, I don't need Best Buy to constantly be refreshing in the background. Things like email maybe, if you need fetch notifications, your maps applications, if you need that to constantly be checking your location, things like that. But background app refresh, make sure that you turn it off if you don't want it in the background, right? Because that's gonna consume a lot of battery, whether you're on data or Wi-Fi. If you're on data, it's gonna suck it even more. So keep that in mind, everybody. Another really cool one, which actually goes with screen time, right? So if I go into screen time and I tap into it, go into the settings, I'll go back just to give you guys the rundown. Obviously this shows you everything that you do from a screen time perspective. But if you go into see all activity, you scroll all the way down, it lets you know how many notifications you're getting and from where those notifications are coming from. So you can see that Spark and Outlook, which is basically my email communications, obviously, for work and personal, that's what takes up the most amount of notifications because I have those on and I like to see exactly who's sending me emails. I could probably turn the Spark one off because a lot of it is just newsletters and random notifications, but it gives you good insight as to why you're getting so many, so many notifications, where they're coming from, and if you even need them. So highly recommend going into that and seeing exactly what's going on, and I'll give you guys a bi-week view. You can see that I have over 110 notifications that have come in. Two more things here to show you guys. You wanna turn off auto lock, or turn it on, I'm sorry. So if you go into, again, display and brightness, there is the auto lock feature. I keep mine at five minutes because I don't like it to dim down too quickly, but I recommend if you don't use it a lot, especially with an iPad Pro. With an iPhone, you, you lock it pretty much automatically, right? You always wanna lock it, and it's just second nature to lock your iPhone, but with an iPad that's just sitting on your desk on the Magic Keyboard, I tend to leave it on a lot. And if I, have it at, if I put it at never, I really won't lock it, and that's gonna drain a lot of battery. So make sure you have auto lock on, you know, and use the time that you, you see fit. And then one more, especially that I've noticed because I'm now down in Florida and it's very, very hot and these things are metal and they're thin and they have batteries inside it, limit heat exposure, right? If you're gonna go outside, be in the shade. Don't go take it to the beach, go tanning in 100 degree weather because these things, like heat is the biggest enemy of the battery. So make sure you're lim limiting heat exposure to your battery because heat is what's gonna actually degrade the battery even faster. So keep that in mind. And then lastly, it's pretty much a little wish that I want very, very badly with the Magic Keyboard. I wanna be able to actually use the Magic Keyboard as just a stand sometimes and turn off all the functionality. Because the second you slap this iPad on the Magic Keyboard, it's draining more battery than it would on its own because it's automatically on and it's automatically thinking that you're using the Magic Keyboard actively. And there's no way to like turn it off. I wish that I could just use it as a stand because it's a great stand, especially if you're using it in bed you can kind of lay it on your chest and have it face down to you, but it drains so much battery that it's almost not worth it. So I wish that Apple could just throw something in the keyboard settings that allows me to manually turn it off and let me do that. And then maybe I could even set automations with it and things like that. So that's a big one for me that I think would save everybody a ton of hassle when it comes to battery on their beloved iPad Pros. But that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and learned something new and kind of take one of these things and apply it to either your iPhone or your iPad Pro or any iPad that's running iPadOS 14. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Comment below if you guys are trying any of these tips out and if it's worked. But uh, until next time, peace guys.